One of the main ways that processes share memory and communicate with each other on Windows is by using memory map files. And the way it basically works is that you have a file on disk. It can be either just a regular file or your page file. And you have a certain portion of that file that is mapped into memory. And the cool thing about this is that you can have a couple of processes mapping the same file and the same portion into memory. And if one process writes something into that portion of memory, the other processes that have the same file mapped, they can read it. Today we're going to make a simple example of writing a local chat application. And through that we're going to see the power of memory map files. Let's get started with this. I'm going to start by including Windows.h. Let's name this server.c. To make the video short, the code here is not going to be production ready. It's just going to be for fun, so I'm going to skip a lot of error checking. I'm not going to check the error values of these functions. I'm going to assume everything succeeds, and I'm going to skip any cleanups. Let's start by calling this function. This is create file mapping. By the way, I'm using the W version. W is short for wide character, and it's recommended to use the wide character versions and not the ASCII versions, so you have international language support. You can see that this basically creates a file mapping object for a specified file. And the first parameter is going to be the handle for the file. But we can see that if we pass an invalid handle value, it's just going to be based on the system paging file. So that's what we're going to use for this case. Second parameter is going to be security attributes. I'm just going to leave this as null. Afterwards, we have the protection of the page. I'm going to use read write for this. Next parameter is going to be the size of the file mapping object. We have it separated to high and low order D word. The high order is going to be zero because I'm going to just map a small portion. And the low order is going to be, let's say, 256 bytes. This will effectively just map 256 bytes. I'm just going to use it to send simple strings. So no need for more than that. Last parameter is going to be the name of the file mapping object. This is important because you're going to use this name to open the same object from two different processes. I'm going to call this chat sync file map. Afterwards, assuming everything is successful, we get back a handle. So I'm going to save this handle into a variable. And next up, I'm going to call the map view of file function. As you can see here in the description, this actually maps this into the address space of the calling process. It gets the file mapping object. This will return, by the way, the pointer to the memory. So this is important to save aside. For the file mapping object, I'm passing the file mapping that I created over here. Afterwards, we have a desired axis. This will be all axis because I opened this with read write. Next parameters are the high order file offset and the low order file offset. Both are going to be zero because we're going to start from the start of the file mapping object I just created. Following number of bytes to map, we can see that if this parameter is zero, the mapping extends from the specified offset to the end. So that's what I'm going to use in this case. I'm going to map everything into memory. Assuming everything is successful, now we have the address of the memory that we can start working with. This is the shared memory. Now I'm going to start a loop. This is going to be an infinite loop. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use scanf. I'm going to use a secure version, scanfs. And I'm going to get a string from the user. Let's open the page for scanf here for a sec in the documentation. Specifically, I want to use the width specifier because I want to limit the width of the string that I'm getting from scanf. This is how we do it. Here we specify the width, maximum width of the string. I'm going to use for this 255 because I have 256 and we need to save one for the null terminator. Afterwards, I'm passing in the address. This will be the address of the shared memory. Finally, limit of the maximum bytes that I can write, 256. This will get the string that the user has typed into the terminal and write it into the shared memory. One last thing I need to do is add a mechanism in which I can notify the client that a new message is ready on the shared memory. It's not enough to just write something in the shared memory. We need to wake up the client and tell it that it needs to read a new thing that is incoming from the shared memory. And a great way to implement this is using Windows API events. And this is a very simple object. 
that can be either in a non-signal state or in a signaled state. What we're going to do is we're going to create an event that is going to start non-signaled, and we're going to signal the event each time there's a new message that is ready to be read. So I'm going to use the create event w function to create the event object. First parameter is going to be is the security attribute, so I'm just going to leave this as null. Afterwards, manual reset. I'm going to pass false into this parameter, and this will cause the event to be an automatic reset event. And this is the type of event I want to use because I want each time that the event is read, I want it to go back to the non-signaled state. I don't want it to stay on the signaled state and require the client to use the reset event function afterwards. I want this all to be automatic. Afterwards, we have the initial state of the event. We can see that if the parameter is true, the initial state is signaled. I'm going to pass in false because I want it to start non-signaled. Finally, we have the name. Just like we named the file mapping object, I'm going to name this event object as well. And assuming everything is successful, I'm going to get a handled back here. To signal the event, I'm going to use the set event function. All this gets is just the handled for the event. I'm going to signal the event after the scanf finishes. That's it for the code of the server. Now I'm going to save this and I'm going to save as and I'm going to make a client.c. The client is going to be based on the same code. I'm just going to make small modifications here. Instead of scanf, I'm going to use printf. By the way, we need stdio. I'm going to also add this into the server. And instead of using set event, I'm going to use the wait for single object function. And I'm going to use this to wait on the event until the event is signaled. First parameter is going to be the object to wait on, in this case, the event. Second one is going to be a timeout. I'm just going to pass infinite. So it won't have any timeout. Now let's save the client as well. And I'm going to build both. To build, I'm going to use the x64 native tools command prompt that comes with Visual Studio build tools. I'm going to navigate to the folder with the code. I'm going to start by building the server. I'm going to run cl server.c. cl is the Visual Studio compiler. This also runs the linker by default. Afterwards, I'm going to run cl on the client. And now I'm going to run the server. As you can see, the server is now running. I'm going to run the client as well on a separate tab. Now, if I write something on the server, let's go back to the client. You can see it's written here on the client. Works nicely. Subscribe for more programming videos and thanks for watching.